This is uh, about you know the intro uh, in, uh, introduction of me about me, and uh, maybe I need to tell you I'm a professor for international sustainability, and uh, also uh, I have also the ISI articles they published and used by using the these stories. Um, I think we have planned with Maria for uh, the March 2021 to. Uh, establish a conf international conference in uh, one day maybe in Berlin and two days in London together. If the situation is not good, maybe online, but we are going to introduce these uh, theories in whole world for... In the, in the 21st centuries, uh, our life are shaping by three technological revolutions. We call them D3. Decarbonization, decentralization and digitalization. The aim of this speech uh, would be a uh, discussion of healing the contagion of COVID-19 by implementing the fifth wave and I sustainability uh, plus theories in tomorrow's societies for future of business revolution. This is also to cover the impact of 4.0 technologies on the tomorrow's business, including the large scale deployment of IoT, the employment of big data and machine learning for tomorrow's business forecasting the use of cloud uh, platform for the control of smart cities and the new cyber risk for the sector. The fifth wave theory, which is about readiness to change into a new age, we are just entering and we call this edge of tomorrow. And it forecasted a crisis and presently we are inside the uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, in this uh, speech today, I'm going to use and introduce you some theories and models like the fifth wave or tomorrow age theory, I sustainability plus theory, 7PS model, 3D socio eco environmental SMEs model, and hybrid SME model. Contagion because of COVID 19. The word after contagion caused by COVID 19 virus. Uh, Dr. Marty, Matthias Hawkes, as a researcher for future studies in Germany and his colleagues at the Institute for Future Research have recently published a book entitled The World After Corona, which has been widely reported in German media. Referring to the crisis caused by the outbreak of disease, he wrote, um, these days I'm often asked, when will Corona era end? And we will back to a normal. And I say, never. There are some historical periods to change the course of the future. We call this period a deep crisis. We are now in this position. According to Matthias Hawkes and his colleagues' research, they found five points because of Corona uh, uh, pa pandemic. Number one, the world will change. Behavior will change. Humanity will return. The economy after the contagion crisis and who are the main losers of the contagion of the Corona virus? The world will change. Yes, because of coronavirus, we can see uh, all people, they understood how much we don't understand. Families, neighbors, friends became more closer because we found, oh, we had value before and we didn't understand that because that time we could communicate with people, we could travel to the other countries, we could see them, and now it is not possible. That's why this changed our you know, ideas to understand the value of our friends. We understood the value of our friends, family, and network. Behavior also will change because digital culture technology has taken its place in practice. Now, almost without IT and without IoT platforms and infrastructure is not possible. For example, today our webinar just is possible because of the IT platform. Most co-workers who previously avoided remote video conferencing and preferred to fly for a mission now realize that is more practical and conservative approach. Also, you know, more productive because for example, uh, during these days, I had five speeches in three days, but if I wanted to do in person, of course that was not possible, maybe just one, because I had to travel, to go to airport, terrain, car, and etc. 
Uh, also, we understood it is more practical and productive to uh, use this kind of IT platform and technologies for educational stakeholders, like professors, students, and the executive, because now we can use it for home office. For example, at our university in Germany, every day we have more than 5,000 students, and that's just possible because of this kind of technologies. That's why our behavior should be also a new way and change. Humanity will return. The medical stuff helps, but along with advanced medical techniques, our social behavior is also uh, is going to change. Because, uh, for example, if you remember, uh, in January, February, when the coronavirus uh, was infected China, many countries, they were worried and they said, what is going to happen? I remember in Mar March 2020 in Germany and Denmark, I could see in the TV, many people, they, they went to the shops and they tried to buy everything. They were worried. They didn't know what is going to happen because of lack of information. They wanted to buy uh, toilet paper. They wanted to buy uh, some uh, food, uh, rice, spaghetti, and etc. But after some time, they found, oh my God, this is wrong. Humanity should return because we need to understand each other. And this uh, coronavirus, that doesn't mean if I try to save my life and myself, everything is good. No, because my health, my life depends on the other health and life. That's why we need to have and help each other. And this, this you know, kind of force uh, make humanity return. Number four is the economy after contagion crisis. Many people thought because of this economy shift, many, uh, you know, we are going to face with so many risks and the situation is so dangerous because so much uh, problems you could see in the stock market, sometimes in China, more than 50% bankrupt and etc. But we could see we have never reached zero for the economy because that's like economy is alive and breathing like a person can sleep, dream, and keep continue to life. And uh, number five is about who is the main loser of this contagion. Of course, those people want to incite people against each other. They are not playing as, a, as an important role in the future issues because they are really the main losers. The economy is still alive and breathing. This is very important to understand we should not be you know disappointed because of economic situation because many people because of the uh, you know um, uh, psychological reasons maybe sometimes because of media or some uh, reports they are going to be crazy and say oh my god what is going to happen in the future maybe i lose my job i uh, don't have any money to continue what shall i do for my family for my children and etc but i'm going to tell you that not, not that's not going to happen but there are some readiness we need to prepare ourselves. Human will also look at the economy to see how far the economy has been weakened without disintegrating. An economy that used to the uh, weaken by every small increase in taxes and every government intervention. Also, we have experienced infrastructure damage and the stock market have fallen by 50% sometimes more and many companies have gone bankrupt we have a, we have never reached zero as i said before because economy um, is still alive and breathing in the fall there, are, there will be once again be a global economy we will be surprised that even the loss of capital during the failure of stock exchange was not <coughs> sorry was not a painful uh, as painful as we initially fair. In the final look at the world after the outbreak, after a period of fear, an inner force emerged. But the world leads the experience that we still a kind of freshness is forming inside us. That means we need to be, um, you know, we need to be um, positive about the future economy and we need to make and prepare ourselves. The world after contagion by coronavirus. Uh, there is a research and in this research after six months uh, since uh, January 2020, they found some, you know, some points because of the coronavirus can uh, force in whole world. The first one is the authority and power of the most technology companies. Today, for example, the company like Zoom, Adobe Connect, 
Skype, WhatsApp, they have much uh, power than before because people, they need to use them as platform to communicate to each other. Contagion outbreak of COVID-19 and reconciliation with technologies. Also privacy risk, data security. Yes, now we are going to do everything on the IT platform and uh, web, but this is also dangerous because there are, there are so many uh, risks about privacy and also data security, and we need to be really careful. A strengthening bonds between people because of understanding the value that already existed, but they didn't understand that time. The provision of the health and medical care is evolving. Medical doctors, nurses, and pharmacists on the front line of this war or biological war with the coronavirus. Resumption of the world trade, as I said, we are we, we can forecast in the future if we people if government if all sectors they are going to prepare everything we can assumption the world trade to regain the opportunity for living in a better way and prosper uh, prosper the economy actually in uh, on the 21st of uh, august i'm going to have a speech in this regard how internet of health in the health sector can help us and give us opportunity to live in a better way and prosper the economy. What is the biggest risk to society in the next two years? There is another research uh, in the world, and I'm going to give you the result of this research for the biggest risk to the society in the next two years. Uh, according to this research, they found there are uh, so many different kinds of risks, but they put them together and they found at the moment economy's health is one of the most important ones. In this research, data is from the World Economy Forum, and this, uh, there are 347 surveys of risk analysts on how they rank, they rank the likelihood of major risk we face in the world behind the pandemic. pandemic. Uh, what is, you know, the question is, what are the most likely risks for the world over next two years. The biggest risk for the society we will face in next two years, we can put them in five categories. Number one, economic, social, environmental, technological, and geopolitical. The most likely risk to society is going to be the economic damage caused by COVID-19 virus as millions are forced out of work or forced to stay at home or do uh, home office. The most likely risk in this report, they say the most likely risks are going to be in 31 different risks, but in five categories. And they say the definition of risk can be as an uncertain event or condition with the potential for significant negative impacts on, uh, on various countries, businesses, activities, and industries. As I said, there are 31 risks has been grouped in five major categories. 10 risks in economic, 9 risks in social, 6 risks six risk in geopolitical, 4 risks in technological, and 2 risks for environmental. We are going to a new paradigm. But as I said from that Matthias uh, Horks from Institute for Future Study in Germany, we don't come back to the time you know we had before contagion of COVID-19. But we are going to a new paradigm. That means this is not negative or bad. The question is, the world will be better place for living or not? In my fifth wave theory, I forecasted if we have some conditions, we are going to have a better place for living in the future. And this is very strange because everything seems they are going to be bad and negative, but maybe this is not negative. This is the cost for going to a better place for living or changing a life in a better situation. Actually, I have one special issue about this in Urban Sciences um, Journal in uh, Basel, Switzerland. And in this uh, journal, I am going to say and uh, talk about the utopia and the new concept called Urban 6.0. Economic shift. According to this research, the survey showed that economic fallout poses the most likely threat in the near future, dominating four of the top five risk overall. With job losses felt, the, the world over a recession of global economy has 68,6% of experts feeling worried. This is very important because it's almost 70%. The economic shift. The pandemic has aggregated, ag uh, aggr um, 
accelerated a structural change in the global economy system, but this does not come without consequences. As, as central bank offer trillion, trillions of dollars worth in response packages and policies, but this makes countries with more, you know, debt. Recovering from COVID-19, these are a risk to, uh, these are risks to anticipate now before it's too late. Another concern is the COVID-19 is now hitting developing con economies hard, critically stalling the progress they have been making on the world stage. And for this reason, almost 40% of uh, this survey response anticipate this may cause this market to collapse. Now we are going to the second categories, social uh, risk. High uh, on everyone's mind is also the possibility of another COVID outbreak. They are, people, they are worried maybe in the near future we are going to face with new virus, new contagion. With many countries moving to reopen, a few more risks come into play. 21% of analysts believe social inequality, inequality will be worsened, while 60% forecast that na national social safety net could be under pressure. Now the third group, geo geopolitical uh, troubles or risks. Further restriction on trade and travel movement are an alarm bell for 50, almost 50% 50 of risk analysts the, this relationship were already proud to, be, to begin with. In fact, global trade could drop sharply by 13 to 32% while foreign direct invest, FDI, is projected to decline by an additional 30 to 40% in 2020. It's almost going to be half. The drop in foreign set or aid could also put even more stress on existing humanities issues, such as food insecurity in conflict ridden uh, part of the world. Then the fourth category was the technology overload or risk. Technology has enabled a significant number of people to cope with the impact of spread of COVID-19. An increased dependence on digital tools has enabled wide-scale remote working for business, but for many without, many more without this option. This accelerated adoption is hindered rather than help. Over a third of uh, serv uh, surveyed risk analysts see the emergence of cyber attack due the re to the remote working as a rising concern. As I said before, also another re uh, result of the, another uh, research showed we have to face with a big challenge or maybe crisis that is data security and privacy risk. Another near 25% see their treat of rapid automation as a drawback, especially for those in occupations that do not allow for remote work. Environmental uh, setbacks and risk. Last but certainly not least, COVID-19 is also potentially healing it, uh, halting progress on climate action. While the, there were initial drops in pollution and emission due to lockdown, some estimate uh, there could be a self bound back effect on the environmental as economy reboot. As a result of more immediate concerns, sustainability may, ta uh, sustainability may take a back seat. But with environmental issues considered the biggest global risk this year, these delayed investments and missed climate targets could be the earth further behind on action. The greatest concern of this research we are going to show you in three points. Number one, in particular, concern around another desert outbreak weighed currently at 40%. Almost 40% people, they believe we are going to face with the new outbreak another disease. A tighter cross-border movement came in uh, at 34%. 34% they are busy and worried for the global trade and transportation because they want to do global business or commerce. On the bright side, many experts also looking 
uh, to this recovery trajectory as an opportunity for a great reset for global system. Actually, I believe this great reset is uh, something like, you know, one of the aims of globalization. Maybe we can look at this positive or negative. I have published an article uh, in 2019 in uh, Vostok Conference for International Conference on Research in Humanities. And this article was one of the best articles for the conference because in the article I tried to say the study of re revolution models and holding a discussion of social ca cultural capital, trust, democracy, and welfare revolution as exusing to sustainability. Because sometimes some, I don't know, some groups, some people, they use this kind of, you know, as I showed in the last slide, great reset for globalization or with some nice target like sustainability, but they are just excusing to do that because they want to do something else. Some theories for the global crisis because of contagion. Number one, history repeating itself. Some people, they believe because history happened uh, and, uh, you know, repeat itself, we, then we can see it like trees algorithm. In trees algorithm, we say when we want to do innovation, already they did some problem solving and then we can go to them and make some ideas and we don't need to uh, you know create the uh, wheels again that's why in this model we say we should look at the history for example uh, something like 500 years ago something like black disease happened in europe then that time also many people dead, you know, died that's why we can learn how we can move and manage it and how we can face it with this kind of challenge or crisis a normal sickness if it is a really normal sickness, we can say we need to have a, uh, or make a um, comprehensive plan for managing the contagion in the cities, government, business, and economy. The illness of conspiracy. Create a smart, innovative cities with a special passive defense plan. If it is really something like this, there are some theories, like the third biological world warfare theory. This is saying maybe this virus made by some people to make the third world war but you know in the um, new way based on this model because of hybrid warfare hybrid warfare with biological virus uh, which is infecting selective next one is countries with which are under velvet or color or um, soft revolution impacts because some of the countries uh, they are under this kind of revolution uh, and maybe this is another topic we can make another topic or presentation for this but this kind is because of going to modern life and, uh, as I said, excusing for sustainability, they would like to do and help to make this kind of virus fake, the fake way in laboratory to do this. But this is just a theory or hypothesis. Reduce the global population and urbanization from more than 8 billion people to 500 million because of high rate of urbanization. This is also another theory. Is if it is really right, this is so negative, but I hope this is really just a theory, nothing more. And the last one, fake judgment day. There are some hybrid views like smart ubiquitous cities, the importance of role of digitalization for cities and citizens, and also hybrid revolution in or urban planning, business creating a new job, extending the medical and uh, pharmacal and pharmaceutical activities, but by killing some other business such as tourism, hotel, and etc. At the moment, you know, uh, I had a uh, speech with my friend yesterday. Uh, he is working in the tourist sector in Germany, and he said we have so many hotels. They, you know, they are going to uh, die of their business. The the you know the uh, famous airline in Germany, Lufthansa, for three months the business died completely there. And this kind of, you know, uh, tourism business and the related business, they are really under pressure. But some other business like hospitality and the hospital, um, medical care and uh, nurse, they have so much uh, work to do, but also they are da under dangers because um, many doctor, medical doctors or nurses, nurses at the moment, they got infected and they lost their life. And he, here I would like to use this opportunity and say we are very thankful from all the medical doctors, nurses, and people they work in pharmacies. Religion. Uh -huh. Another view is religion. Not just, some people they said this is you know we already uh, saw some protected or forecasting from our religion and we could see this going to happen in 2020 or after that. Some of the psychological views they say we can use this as you know making people 
scare and then do some, uh, you know, bad or negative things. Social, it's also city and government should update their urban plan. Economy, cities and government should support citizen. Here, the, the role of government is so important to support the citizen until they can recover their business. Media, how different social media can influence the behavioral economy and psychology. Like disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. As I said, this is because of people, some or groups, some some uh, sectors they want to use uh, for the negative um, uh, targets. Uh, according to my model, seven PS, I will introduce you in the uh, future slides. There are also another imp uh, you know, impacts for the sustainability impacts for seven pillars of sustainability: economy, social, environment, political, culture, education, and technology. According to this model, we are, we, I'm going to tell you the, uh, you know, the sustainability impacts of COVID-19 COVID pandemic. Economy. Global crisis killed the economy, but saved the fossil energy and natural resources. Yes, during these six months, economy got uh, so much under pressure, but some, uh, you know, other things like fossil energy was good, natural resources okay, and also that could uh, influence on environmental sector for some days, some months, some big cities, they had, you know, not pollution and emission. Social, new situation by less social activities, but more with your family. Environmental, good for environment because of less transportation factories and air pollution. Political, new international relation in civilization and new model of diplomacy, policies, etc. For example, cities on lockdown and health policy. Culture, New cultural value like digital culture, also like uh, humanity uh, returns, or we understood the value we had before. Education, home office or online learning, and new business model for training and education and qualification. Technology or technical, distance learning and online learning is possible because of the technological infrastructure. And I have also two more. One is uh, according to the fifth wave theory, and another one is tomorrow society. In this speech, which has um, about uh, using this fifth wave and a uh, sustainability plus theories. We are talking about uh, tomorrow's society, and I call this new definition Society 6.0. Can help the business planners to make infrastructure for tomorrow's business with making a path to create modern, innovative, sustainable business concerned on CSR strategies, 7PS model, and sustainable development, as well as tomorrow readiness to manage the contagion of post pandemic because now we are busy with the pandemic but we are we need to also prepare ourselves for the readiness for the post pandemic this is also very important actually in um, 2nd of june uh, i as representative of my university sent a proposal to folex wagon uh, foundation to get uh, fin uh, finance or found for this project to do uh, some forecasting and planning con comprehensive plan for the future and post-pandemic era. Uh, the last one is tomorrow society and future business. This is a new concept about innovative society and business in society 6.0, which is super intelligent, innovative society. It can protect their citizens' life, quality, and livability by using future internet, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity system, internet of things, digitalization infrastructure, and risk management. Some modern issue I'm going to show you in next slide is sustainability in terms of team, digitalization, smartness, small, medium sized enterprises, innovation, and today's challenges and tomorrow's crisis. Sustainability. As you know, we have 17 sustainable development goals uh, created by United Nations. That was one of the biggest project for the social system in United Nations. They did this project with almost uh, more than three years with 8 million uh, people and they found uh, some 17 um, you know goals to prepare the situation of life and make the world a better place for living for example no poverty for example quality education for example um, growing economy for example industry innovation and infrastructure and sustainable cities and communities uh, responsible of consumption and production. Uh, you know, there are about everything we can have a life blue with focusing on the uh, water resources and green because of the natural resources and partnership for the goals. 
in the interactive SDR sustainable development um, um, goals 2020 dashboards provide a visual rep representation of countries' performance by sustainable development goals to in identify priority for the actions. Where should we be in 2030? Exactly in this presentation, I'm going to forecast from 2020 until 2030, what is going to happen and where should we go? B, because as I said, if we follow the conditions and do the readiness for the, you know, according to the fifth wave and I sustainability plus stories, then we are going to have a new paradigm and a new life is a better place for living. Sustainability is also uh, another definition. Livability plus quality of life. Of course, livability is very important. According to a uh, new situation in the world, contagion of COVID-19 could make the world, uh, you know, so low in livability. But some countries, for example, in Germany, I can see because of some comprehensive plan and following people because of the social system and also, you know, training uh, plan, they can follow and they can make the situation more livable to go to the next step to make the quality of life. Then they are going to keep more sustainable. Sustainability, we have traditional pillars of sustainability, social, environmental, and economy. And if you want to do the priority, we can see at first we need, if you want to keep the economy and business, you know, alive, we need to focus on environmental factors and first environmental responsibility and then we can start the social relation at the end we can go to economy and uh, business because one of the problem we did in these 200 years was we just focus on financial benefit we just focus on economy business and we destroyed whole world destroyed the social relation destroyed the environment and now this is going to back to us there is a model i uh, have uh, invented in 2019 called socio eco environmental uh, SMEs. In this model, I made a cube with three indexes, economy, environment, and social. And I scored them each one for, from zero to 10. And then if you look at the cube, we have three, uh, two uh, dimensions for three uh, indexes. One of them from the left, is, if you look, is uh, environment and social. And uh, you have a mat matrix uh, and in this matrix, you can do calculation for the environmental responsibility. In the middle uh, cube, you can see two indexes, environment and economy. And with this one, we can say uh, our business is going to focus on economic efficiency. Also, we have a matrix and we can do calculation. And the last one in the right side is social and economy. And when we have these two indexes, then we can focus on social cohesion. And also we have a matrix and we can do calculation. But the question is, which one has priority? According to my explanation, we should change the priority from business and finance to firstly, environmental responsibility. Then environmental responsibility is first priority. And then social cohesion and social activities is second one. And then the last one should be economy and economic efficiency and business and finance. That was a big, big mistake human did in during this 200 years. You can see the, again the model, the model I gave you, socio-eco environment SMEs and the, uh, the three pillars of sustainability. First, uh, first one, oh. environment, social relation, and economy. I, had, I have also in, invented and introduced another model called hybrid business and hybrid small medium sized enterprises. And we, in this model, I said, we should not focus just on business and economy and financial focus. We also need to focus on social responsibility, CSR, <coughs> environmental friendly, energy and resource saving, and also future planning. If our companies, they are going to this point, point, then they can be really successful. For example, I can give you an example. In January, I got an offer from Adidas headquarters in USA, in Portland, and they offered me to, yeah, uh, you know, a job. And the job position was uh, head of business develop, uh, development uh, department. And I asked them, but why you ask me? Because I didn't send any uh, application. And they said, yes, we found your information on LinkedIn and we found you are uh, suit for this job. I said, but you know, I'm people for mainly for academic sector. Why you want me to this job? And that's the, the answer was so interesting. They said, because Adidas is going to more focus on social responsibility, environmental friendly. That's why 
we want to use something like someone like you because you did so much re research on blue green sustainability and we want to use this for our business model for example at the moment adidas is producing some shoe sport shoes completely 100 percent by recycling the plastic and the other rubbish and this is really really going to show this company adidas is going to move to hybrid company because they understood this kind of pandemic and this kind of crisis can uh, you know damage their business that's why they need to change the business model 7ps model as i told you is another model i i said the seven the, the traditional uh, pillars of sustainability the three pillars is not enough that's why i made the seven pillars economy social environmental political uh, cultural educational and technical in this model you can see we have these uh, points and of course um, um, economy is very important social uh, and environmental they, these three were they were from the traditional model but i add the political educational cultural and technical and um, according to this model i could do uh, also a score them from one to ten and then i could do the calculation uh, with, by survey interviews and the desk research to find for example if you look at this photo you can see the blue one is more harmonized and big than the red one is not and these are two companies before the contagion of COVID-19 and after. And that shows the company, the blue one, was more sustainable according to these seven pillars. And after that, was not sustainable. You can see it's not harmonized, sharp, and small. Then for sustainability impacts, we need to combine two definitions for sustainable development. One is seven pillars, as I told you I have invented. Another one, livability plus quality of life. We have another definition because of the word economy has changed from a business economy to a data and business economy. This is really, really interesting. In my fifth wave theory, I said after, you know, something like um, 2000, the year 2000, the business economy completely moved to data and business economy. Uh, economy. That's why we call um, this uh, concept Internet of Business, using the Internet of Things in business sector. A smartness and digitalization. Medina Burja declared a smartness as an idea that covers Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and all smart services like smartphones, smart cities, and etc. Since 1970s, applying a smartness in citizen enterprises, cities have been occurred to enhance quality of human life. That means a smartness has a really important role at the moment in our you know, sustainability life. Digitalization could be applied as one of the tools to develop sustainable development or sustainability in countries as well as in business. Digitalization is about integration of digital technologies into everyday life that can digitalize or everyday business. It plays significant roles in various aspects of life like different business like smartness. In our university, we did a three years research in Germany about digitalization for a small medium sized enterprises and we found this dimension of digitalization i'm going to show you digitalization in this has three dimensions one is it infrastructure another one is management of human resource with innovation approach and last one is value chain industry 4.0 and society 5.0 industry 4.0 is one of the western concept like digitalization and Society 5 is non-Vescar uh, concept like ubiquitous. Industry 4.0 was introduced by the German government. Uh, it is about intelligent and smart network of products and processes based on fifth wave eras. Embedded systems, smart factories, strong networks, good computing and information technology security. The main benefit of Industry 4.0 are reducing cost creating more friendly and effective, uh, effective environment, sustainable energy management, improving mass production, improving customer service and product, and reducing process of re realizing the new product to market. Society 5.0 is one from the non-West country, from Japan. Uh, the rapid evaluation, improving of ICT and other kind of high technologies like digitalization make significant change in industry and society. Society 4.0, 5.0 concept is one of the idea created uh, those uh, evaluations by Japan. Society 5.0 as super smart society has emerged uh, from the 21st 
century. So 35 is concerned with every aspect of life, such as mobility, manufacturing, food production, reducing disasters, energy, finance, public services, cyberspace, and efficiency of organizations, regions, and cities. Fundamentally, Society 5.0 is a tool to make balance between economic development and social sustainability. Then I am showing you two ideas for digitalization, invest, and ubiquitous in non-invest. Invest, they call this the same time industry 4.0, and in the uh, non-invest, they call society 4.0. And in my fifth wave theory, that I have uh, invented in 2010, I improved in 2017 and combined these two definitions together for Society 5 and Industry 4 to make a new com uh, the concept, Society 6.0 or Utopia or Urban 6.0. The fifth wave a or tomorrow age theory and I sustainability plus theory. Fifth wave theory, that was introduced uh, a new concept by me uh, for readiness to change into a new age just we are entering. It forecasted a crisis and presently we are inside COVID-19 as, as I for, have forecasted in the fifth wave theory we are going to face the new crisis and in this presentation today I'm going to introduce you this new crisis we are going to face in the near future until 2030. The fifth wave tomorrow for final edge theory which regards the future of Industry 4.0, that called Industry 5, and Society 4.0, that called Society 6, and Age of Tomorrow. This theory posits the readiness of the age of tomorrow to the challenges and tomorrow's crisis and shocks. Actually, I talked to Dr. Maria, the same topic we have a webinar, we are going to establish a conference in, uh, sometimes in November 2020, and then in that conference, we are going to talk more about this future crisis. Societies. The rapid evaluation and improvement of ICT uh, could change the other technologies and uh, society. Society 5 concept is one of the idea created the evaluation by Japan. Basically, society first was the hunting society. That was something like 13,000 years ago. Society second, that was about agriculture society. Society third was industrial society and society Four was about um, improvement of technology in the 20th century, and society five is a super smart society in 21st century. And this society five is uh, about the uh, combination of society and industry and mobility and everything else in the citizens and urban science. The fifth wave theory or tomorrow age theory, which regards the future of industrial world and society five, and edge of tomorrow is going to talk about the new concept, as I said, urban six or society six. Tomorrow society or society six. The societies and cities economy has changed from society and urban economy to data and urban economy. That was before for the business, now for the cities and urban. Leading a new concept, tomorrow society or society six or urban six or utopia. In this uh, figure, I'm going to show you the, uh, you know, the fifth wave theory with the focus on society. If you look, 70,000 years ago, we had the society one that was hunting society. Uh, 13,000 years ago, that was agriculture society. Uh, 300 years ago, society three, industrial society. Uh, something like 30 to 40 years ago, society four, that was post-industrial society or information society. And in that time, uh, the famous person in um, USA, Elvin Toffler, published a book called The Fifth Wave in 1970s. And then Industry 4 or Society 5 is for 21st century. And in my theory, Fifth Wave is going to start from edge of tomorrow. We are going to enter to tomorrow society. And it's about Industry 5, Society 6, and future shock. In the Fifth Wave theory, I can show you another view. Uh, you can see also there are four revolutions, the cognition revolution 70,000 years ago, agriculture revolution 10,000 years ago, scientific revolution 500 years ago, and today we have started for two revolutions. 100 years ago, first business revolution, and now we are going to second business revolution. This is the history map of this theory, and I show you from 70,000 years ago what happened for revolution, waves, ages, industry, and society, and 
small medium sized enterprises until now we have SME three we have now we have SME four and in my theory we are going to have small medium sized enterprises with the readiness for uh, the fifth wave theory and I call them uh, SME 5.0 the next theory called I sustainability, plus, uh, sustainability plus theory. I would like to ask uh, my colleague, Michelle, how many minutes do I have time to continue? Because I'm going to um, uh, close to, you know, my uh, conclusion. Right. I think we're just about to get there in a few minutes. So you're, you're perfectly time. Is it possible to uh, conclude everything in 10 minutes, please? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Very good. I sustainability plus theory is about a trinity of open innovation, sustainability, and for a smart high technology. Here you can see a figure of this model. Here we have re uh, virtual reality, reality, high technology, IT infrastructure, and then we have business technology, marketing innovation, and then we have seven pillars of sustainability. A combination of sustainability, innovation, open innovation, and all high modern technologies. As I told you before, in the 21st century, we have D3, three revolutions, they could shape our life, digitalization, decarbonization, de decentralization. And as I showed you that uh, fifth wave theory, 70,000 years ago happened the first revolution, cognition, uh, 10,000 years ago, agriculture, 500 years ago, scientific revolution, and now I told you about two revolutions. The first business revolution 100 years ago, and second one now. And now we are going to edge of tomorrow and second business revolution. These are the the figure of the revolution. In this model, I have a, a KTB, knowledge, technology, and business. I am telling you, if you want to prepare and do readiness for the fifth wave theory, you need to focus on this model, this cube, with three indexes, knowledge, technology, business. It is not possible to ignore one of them because you need to have all of them together in the sustainable way. Using the mentioned theories for forecasting the tomorrow's crisis and today, uh, challenges. Some questions. When does the outbreak of COVID-19 end and do we return to normal? Second question. Is the contagion of COVID-19 is a challenge or global cross and shot? And how would be the future? Uh, Michelle, is it possible to, for two minutes, uh, you know, the uh, attendees answer to this, try to answer to this question because after, after the answer, I can continue to forecast the future crisis. Okay. Yes. Then I would like to ask you, please answer me these three questions. What is your idea? What is your opinion? Do you have any idea? Do you think the outbreak of COVID-19 is going to end and we come back to the normal? The first question. And the second one, is it really a challenge or global crisis? And the last one, how is the future? Can you tell me this? Or do you have any opinion? Well, I think there will be some sort of uh, different normal, like that, that, that we will move somewhere, but I probably wouldn't say we will we'll, we'll return to where we were. We'll probably move somewhere else. Um, and it's probably a, a challenge more than a shock or crisis, but it probably depends how the different, you know, uh, countries and nationalities and businesses react to it. Is it something uh, new and different? Very good, thank you. Then I keep continuing for the answer. Question one, do we come back to normal and the COVID-19 will end? Never. There are some historical period that change the course of the future. We call this period deep crisis. We are now in, the, in this position. We are going to go to a new paradigm. If we have the condition, of course, for the readiness, we make, we make the new life a better place for living. But we, of course, it is not possible without doing anything. We need to try. The second question, is condition, contagion of COVID-19 a challenge or crisis? Of course, a challenge. This crisis will be edge of tomorrow because uh, this is, you know, this the COVID-19 was the beginning of the tomorrow crisis. That was a do open door to show us the future crisis. How would be future? In the next slide, I'm going to forecast the tomorrow's crisis and with using the uh, two mentioned theories. First of all, I'm telling you two day challenges, restriction and crisis. Today or human, 
uh, you know, life and history, big uh, changes have been generated through the challenges, restrictions, and crisis. I'm going to tell you six of them. Wars, sanctions, low sustainability, risks. We have also four groups of risks, project risk management, financial risk management, governmental risk management, and enterprise risk management. Actually, the contagion of COVID-19 is one of the governmental risks. That's why this is just a risk or challenge. Growing urbanization, and the last one, high green gases emission and climate uh, pollution. According to our sustainability plus theory, during the human history, invention and innovation has been created through the challenges, restriction, crisis. War, sanction, low sustainability, cli climate pollution, environmental, biodiversity collapse, and etc., are the main challenges and restrictions. Improvement through such innovation are so admirable because most of them have changed the world. These inventions and innovation make human life be changed fundamentally. There are proper examples of innovation could create under restriction in order to make a better life. Because this mode theory, I sustainability plus, is focusing on innovation, especially open innovation. Today we are in 21st century and we have passed first, second, third, fourth waves and we are going to start age of tomorrow and fifth wave theory. As we said, before 1970, various business and economy could affect and improve technology and human life, but now these um, technologies are going to change, affect, and improve our life and our uh, economy and business. Wars, sanctions, as I told you, they are like uh, challenges for now and before we had, but this makes us to a new topic or new concept, hybrid war. Hybrid war happened from 1981. And they found we are, you know, people in the countries, they found we should stop the hard war and we need to go to, to a new concept of war. Because, you know, after the World Second War, uh, that happened the Cold War between Soviet Union and the USA. And then after that, the hybrid war started with media war, uh, psychological war, cyber war, technological war, biological war, and etc. But today, we can see we are in the hybrid war, really. There, these uh, wars themselves are based on innovation and modern technology. So the best key for facing the fight them is innovating sustainable smart solution. In this speech, innovation under restriction is explored in order to collate with restriction and make situation sustainable in order to improve human life. According to this model, uh, 7PS, I already told you, we have a chain for today challenges and tomorrow crisis. And we need to be really clever to put, you know, energy for readiness for the fifth wave theory and stop these chains to continue. The first chain at the moment is contagion of COVID-19. Maybe the next one is going to be economic shift and then some social, and uh, you know, risks, and then maybe also some cultural risk and the next uh, chain is political risk because of seven PS, you know, I'm talking about seven pillars of sustainability and environmental risk. And then we are going to last one, the other crisis. We need to be really careful and prepare ourselves for the readiness for tomorrow uh, society and tomorrow crisis and try to, you know, uh, uh, try to split this chain and not tell, let them to continue as a chain to, you know, make more crisis for our future life and business. Here I'm showing you in this photo, today challenge and tomorrow crisis. If you look at this, you know, the little wave in this photo, this is some risk from contagion of COVID-19. The thing we face at the moment we are facing. Contagion to COVID-19 is really a risk at the moment for us. But this risk, according to that chain I showed you, can go to the new chain and make you know the situation worse to go to the new crisis. And we need to prepare ourselves with the readiness for fifth wave theory and also split this chain. But the, the bigger, you know, the, after this little wave, we are going to face a bigger wave. And this is very close, we maybe until 2023. Crisis, uh, crisis of contagion of other biological, biological attack. Many people, many researchers, they showed us in near future, we are going to face with new biological attacks. That's why we need to prepare to, you know, manage them and to fight them. But of course, 
underneath this water, in this ocean crisis, we have hybrid warfare. Hybrid warfare is always dangerous, and they are underneath, and we don't know when they can come out. In the second photo, you can see again the little yellow wave is risk caused by contagion of COVID-19. The uh, big uh, yellow wave is the contagion of the other biological attack. And then we have little orange wa wave. It is risk caused by economic shift. But after that, uh, maybe as I showed you that research result for two years, the f you know there were 31 different risks, but the highest one was economy. That's why uh, until 2023, we are going to face with a big crisis because of recession. And still we have the hybrid warfare. And then again, the yellow one is the little uh, and big one from uh, COVID-19 and the biological attack. The green, the orange one was the economic shift. The big one was crisis by the, um, you know, uh, recession of economy. And then we have the little wave, what blue, uh, this is about high green gas emission and climate pollution. This is also is going to happen soon because there are some videos and research about, you know, the oceans and the ice uh, in the north and the south of the, uh, the, the earth. And if you look at them from 1919, um, most of the ice, they are going to be warm. And in the near future, we are going to face a big, you know, risk with the greenhouse gas emission and cli climate pollution. And the biggest one is so, so dangerous is Christ by climate change. And this is about bio, biodiversity collapse. And this is really, really dangerous. That That is really big, big Christ. And if we don't focus on hybrid companies, I showed you my model, not just on business, also for being responsible for the uh, uh, environment and also have a good relationship with social responsibility, then we can, you know, um, stop and uh, manage this big crisis by climate climate change. And still we have the hybrid warfare all the time underneath. Then you can see the situation now in this photo. Risk, the yellow one, risk of COVID-19, and then a little bit bigger for bi biological attack. A risk caused by economic shift, and then caused by recession, and then emission and climate pollution, and then caused by climate change. Again, technology is another one. Technology, you know, after this climate change, technology is so dangerous. And we need to be really be careful because, uh, for example, I can give you an example, the movie or the book, The Jurassic Park from Dr. Michael Crichton, that was a good example for this. People use technology, 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 modern technology, but at the end, they could not control the technology and technology can dominate people and destroy the life. And we need to really be careful. And the highest, you know, price is biodiversity collapse and we should really stop this. We should not let this to happen because otherwise we are going to end the life. <laughs> and still we have the hybrid warfare. Okay, now I'm going to show you all these um, waves in one slide. First one, other biological attack, precision because of economic shift, climate change because of high green gas emission and climate pollution, biodiversity collapse and technological. Technological is about data security, control devices not be out of standard condition, robotics because maybe in the future, because these robots that are going to be intelligent, maybe they can dominate people. And this is, you know, we saw these things in the movies before, but now they are going to happen. Weapons, this is also something very dangerous because now we have so many nuclear tests in the world and we don't know how it's going to be consequences of them. And the last one, consequences of some events, uh, the other crisis, like Second World War, we don't know what happened really in Second World War. There are so many top secret information and we don't know them. And maybe in the near future, we can also have some consequences from them. Nuclear repentance, because in oceans, in some desert, some countries, they do nuclear repentance. And this is really crazy. And we don't know about the consequences of them to make new crises. Chernobyl explosion. Chernobyl explosion still is one secret because I'm sure there are something consequences for the future life and we need to really prepare for this and some top secret issues in Antarctica. Uh, this is also something if you google you can see so many things about this and this is also some consequences for the future crisis. And still I told you hybrid warfare is about the 
soft and color revolution, contagion warfare, and biological war. Okay, uh, here I'm telling you for these things, there are some uh, other uh, research results. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to have enough training, enough skills, and enough competencies for doing this and facing with this uh, crisis and manage them to have this readiness to make the world better place for living for the future, for focus on the uh, hybrid companies, not just business, also the society, especially firstly, uh, environmental responsibility and social uh, uh, relation and um, cohesion, and also uh, having uh, some research, practical research, developing research for the future with using the IoT, also forecasting the problems for IoT or IT technologies, for example, one of them, I told you is data security, but one of them, now during these seven, six months, people, they are at home doing home office because of not having activity, physical activity, exercise, maybe we are going to be fat and little bit lose our health. That's why I can tell you since January, I have started to do every day 13 minutes running and also reduce my food because I wanted to control the situation because I was sure my activity is going to be less. That's why I should not have, you know, the same food like before. Okay. Um, th as I told you, there are some uh, uh, special issues, eight special issues. I would like to invite you for your papers about these topics I told you today. I show you the, you know, uh, the topics, just topics, and then finish my presentation. Blue Green Sustainability and Tomorrow Sharks. This is in uh, Sustainability Journal. The smart Cities, Contagion of Tomorrow Cities. Theories and hybrid view, I sustainable plus and fifth grade theory, uh, future of business evolution by IO, IOB, and uh, in terms of energy, new business scenario, technology and application, innovation under restriction, hybrid SMEs and the fifth grade theory, um, hybrid uh, SMEs, HR competencies, requirement for innovative technologies, social capital, democracy, warfare. This is in USA, this journal. Sustainability by fifth grade theory, and the last one, Utopia and the new concept, Urban Six. Okay, thank you so much for your attention and thank you for uh, from uh, my colleagues at uh, London Institute of Skills Development, Michelle and Dr. Maria and the others for coordinating this free webinar. And now I am here to give you uh, answer for your question or any discussion. Thank you so much. I wish you a nice time. Thank you very much, Dr. Dose. It was uh, really exhausting to be I, I believe you, you would be, you know, talking, you could be talking for much longer than uh, the time we have. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And um, I would like to invite the participants, if they have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Could I uh, ask my question? Yes, of course. Uh, first, I thank uh, London Institute of Skill Development for providing this webinar. And I thank uh, Professor, dear Professor uh, Dr. Dus for uh, your uh, very useful and valuable uh, talk, uh, mm -hmm. and especially for your um, uh, imagining of very uh, hopefulness, hopeful uh, uh, future of the world. <laughs> um, I, I, want, uh, I would like to ask you about the uh, future of a university's activities. Um, as pandemic of COVID-19 and so on. Uh, uh, how do you imagine, how do you um, uh, suppose the future of uh, universities and uh, research uh, and the studies and institutes activities in the future? As you know, in uh, this time, we, uh, uh, we have uh, serious problems, especially in laboratory working, and practical uh, training at university for, uh, for example, for medical science and basic um, um, basic sciences. Uh, what do you suppose? How do you suppose the future of uh, universities and uh, scientific uh, institutes activities? Thank you. First of all, I'm also thankful because of your motivation. Because uh, actually, I don't know your name uh, because it's just. Uh, I'm. Um, Muhammad, Muhammad Tari Ahadi from Iran. Okay, Mr. Ahadi from Iran. It's, uh, happy to talk to you, and uh, this is also happy because you are also uh, my countrymate. Uh, actually, uh, these days I'm doing so many presentations, many webinars, because I think I'm responsible for the society to give information and 
uh, experience to people. Otherwise, if we don't know about the future, if we don't try to prepare ourselves for the future, we are going to really face with real crisis and maybe uh, finish everything. That's why this is very important to give enough information, enough knowledge, skills, training for this. Your question is very interesting because I can uh, see two different parts in your question. Firstly, you want to me to forecast the future of education. Secondly, you want to ask me, you said about, you know, uh, some medical education or medical training, but also not just this, maybe also about vocational training. The training they need to go to laboratory and physically do something, what they need to do. Actually, in this regard, I did minimum five uh, speeches since February 2020 for, for some universities, especially in Germany, because uh, in my, if you look at my, you know, my experience, since 2016, I have uh, worked as an academic leader in Germany for Erasmus Plus, pro an Erasmus Plus project in the European Union called Internet of Energy Education Qualification. And in that project, we try to use the IoT in the energy sector with focus on education and qualification. And now we are going to finish in September 2020. In this project, we found the main thing for the future of people is not technology. Technology is going to be strong and you know developed. But the thing is, we need to prepare for this technology, how to face, how to use. That's why this is very important to have enough skills and qualification for these technologies. Otherwise, we cannot use them. We cannot control them. That's why we started to do this. And in Germany, they, they made some special demonstrators and a STEAM model for education for this kind of question you asked me. That means if there are something they need to do for, from, you know, home office, a doctor want to do operation, but from home office it is possible, but still they need to use IT or robotics. And about uh, the, the other model for using this with, you know, IT platform is demonstrators. Demonstrators let you to use this and you can uh, go to, you know, virtually to the laboratory, do your test, do everything, for example, some electronic test and see your result on oscilloscope and then uh, like, you know, uh, using the simulation. But this simulation method is really intelligent and using uh, high modern uh, Internet of Things um, platforms. But for the next, for the first question, you said how you forecast the future for the education. Of course, this is just forecasting or a hypothesis, but according to this data from now and before, we can see uh, right now, I'm doing my lecture, my activities on my university, everything 100% online. That means in near future, if we really for, for, uh, you know, face with the other crisis, because Corona is not really a crisis, it's a risk. But if in the near future, until 2023, we are going to face with a uh, biological attack, then 100% education is going to a new paradigm to be completely dis by this sense. And then people understand E-learning is a real issue in their life. Thank you. If Thank the you other people enough, they have uh, questions, explain. I'm here to give you feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Wish you so much health. Thank you very much as well. Uh, I was wondering, when you were talking about the, um, uh, at the very beginning, the different factors from your uh, seven pillars, none of them was uh, political and then you were referring to the future as well. Um, I was just wondering which nations do you think will be able to uh, get there first in, in terms of technology integration and um, you know within the society and everything because obviously different nations around the world are, are on different uh, levels and also uh, I would say people in the country they feel differently about using technology um, so I'm just wondering which country do you think okay Michelle, thank you for your question your question is very interesting and the answer is more interesting than the question you know you say which country yeah. actually in the future we cannot say which country because I showed you one one chain about you know the crisis and risks and I said we need to split them we should not let them to continue and also I showed you two views Western view and is non-Western view. I didn't say Eastern, I said non-Western. Because in Western view, Germany has the industry 4.0. And in non-Western view, Japan and South Korea, they have 
Society 5.0 and Ubiquitous. But if you remember when we have, I don't know, do you remember that time? Because I'm, you're so much younger than me. <laughs> I remember first time when I used the internet, that was 1990 in Iran, because I'm originally from Iran. And that time I was working as a researcher at, um, you know, IPM, that was the Institute for Fundamental Research. And then there, when I was working there, we had the first internet there from the air network in Austria to in Iran. That time when I was using internet, but we didn't have Windows that time in 1990. That's why we have to use the disk operating system as, you know, uh, operating system. And also that was a software called uh, Air Mosaic for doing browsing. You know, that was browser at that time. And that was so difficult to use internet, but that time for me was so interesting because I could see something new. I could see these things on the movies or the stories, but now that time I could see them. And then I heard one word all the time in internet that called this internet make the world a village. And I said, what they say, village? What is this? And suddenly in 2002, one person in China got problem in the uh, lab chemical laboratory and people they didn't know what shall they do because that person was in coma and they sent email with that dos you know this operating system to people in whole world and some people in u.s harvard university medical uh, department they found this and they said this chemical gas is dangerous that's why you should use for example this kind of um, uh, uh, treatment and the consequences of this can make the person okay and they did and they said, oh, internet is very good because it could help us. And I said, oh, now I understand what means village. But that was 1990 and 2002. But today we are in 2020. We are really in the village, virtual village. Look, Michelle, you are in London. I'm in Berlin. Another person in Tehran, another person in maybe Egypt, another person in USA. And we are talking together like we are all together in one room, even not village, a room, classroom. That means we cannot say which country. In the near future, in my fifth wave theory, all countries, they are one. And we must be one. Because otherwise it's not possible to manage it. Because I remember Professor Samuel Huntington in 1993 published an article on Foreign Affairs Journal and in 1996 a book about this clash of civilization. And then I I wrote, I published another article and said, I don't, do, do not agree with you because in the future we are not going to have clash of civilization. And in my fifth wave theory says, if we can manage the hybrid warfare, look, I'm telling you, hybrid warfare always was, you know, like a big trade in a whole way with the black color, because that was black. Cognition warfare, media warfare, if we can manage it, of course we don't have clash of civilization. All countries, they can be together because your health, your success is my success, my health. We had a chain for the crisis. Also, we had a chain for success of people, health of people. If I am not healthy, you cannot be healthy because you can get, you know, um, coronavirus from me. And if you get your friend, and it, in, this, is, this is another chain. Also, we need to, you know, stop and split this chain for the virus and make another chain of having communication, ideas, this kind of webinars. And I'm so happy because Dr. Maria told me we are going to have the same topic for, for this forecasting in uh, sometimes in November as a conference, online conference, to have articles for people because this is, this is a, you know, a platform for people to publish, to write, to say ideas, to improve the top theories. And this is you know, something really we want to do. And as you know, now I, I talk you know, uh, for the main uh, partners, London Institute of Skill Develop Development and University of Applied Science FHM in Germany. We are going to establish a very huge conference in, in London and Berlin in 2021 March uh, with more than 20 uh, huge NGOs and universities and institutions to, you know, publish this for whole people in the world to understand what they need to do for the future, what they can do preparation, what they need to do readiness, you know, all these things. That's why if you want to say what I say, a combination, not one country, and also combination of best and non-best. Because the T fifth wave theory is about society six, utopia or urban six, and also SME five and uh, industry five. That means combination of best and non-best together. That's why whole people can be successful 
And also, if you remember in first of my slide, I told you, we are, if we can have this condition and we do the readiness, the new paradigm, the new life is a pla better place for living. Thank you very much. I, I guess it just depends on the how people would, uh, how fast they adapt to it, you know, as a yeah, society. Of there are so, much, well. so many conditions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you too. The yeah. other people? Is there anyone else who would like to ask anything? Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dina, Dr. Abdallah, uh, Dr. Ahmed here as well. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to be fast because I had almost 100 slides, but <laughs> <laughs> but I could manage it. Yeah, I skipped through the last few. Um, well, I think you were pretty very much to the point, and I was quite glad to see uh, your positive outlook, you know, from the very beginning. Uh, it's not something we should be, you know, af afraid of. We should take it as a as a positive way. There should be um, the outcome should be better than the process is, basically. Um. Uh, right. Uh, I think it doesn't seem like anyone else has any questions, so um, I think we'll have to we'll end the session here. But I would like to thank you once again um, for presenting and answering the questions. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure every every one of us uh, is gonna take away at least something uh, away from the today's presentation. So thank you once again, and. Uh, yeah, I wish you all a lovely day, and I hope to meet you once again. And if you've got any, uh, if you'd like to see any more uh, webinars, you'd like to join us, just get in touch with us. It's inquiries at London Institute uh, sd.co.uk, and you can get more information there or, or on our website as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. I am telling you also thank you very much, everybody, also Michelle, because of the coordinating of this webinar and uh, with the best wishes and stay healthy. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. See you later.